So guys, today we are going to be doing our second Lord in the fourth house. And what happens when your planet that controls your second house in your horoscope is in the third house in your horoscope? Because all the planets are moving. So, you know, the Lord of any house might not be in its own house. It'll be moving to some other sign. And right when you're bomb, born, that snapshot is taken. So second Lord represents what? Second, first of all, second house. Second house represents your wealth. It represents your family. It represents your assets, your family assets. It represents your speaking ability because it represents throat, your speech. It represents your food intake, your, your, what you drink, what you eat, and the things that you value. Things that you value. It also represents valuables like jewelry, gold, you know, any kind of family business is represented by that. Okay, so that's second house. And then the Lord, the planet, whatever sign is in the second house and whoever controls that sign moves into the third house in your, in your uh, main birth horoscope. What happens? Well, fourth house then becomes a house of mother, becomes a house of conveniency, homeland, childhood, land, physical home, privacy, your private life. Okay. So when the house that controls the second house comes in the fourth house shows that the things that you value, the things that you want to gain in life is security and privacy of your own home. You, because again, from the second house all the way to the fifth house, you're dealing with the things of the family. So you're still stuck in this realm of one side of the horoscope. So what you value, your wealth, you know, your assets comes through the mother because fourth house is a house of mother. So mother provides the conveniences for you. Mother provides you with the home. Mother provides you with all sorts of good, good things in life. Okay. You, you feel that your, you need to have physical security in your life in order for you to feel valuable. In order for you to value something, you must have it secured. And it shows that you also become a, a, a hoarder of your wealth and you hold your wealth in privacy. You do not want to, you don't want to disclose about your wealth. You don't like to, you know, show off your wealth. No matter if you're a billionaire or you have hundred dollars in your account or hundred rupees in your account, you want to keep it private. Okay. And so there's a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of private emotions that go into your value system. Your money, your value, your family, all is secured into your heart. Because fourth house is also the heart. So you are tied into this complex evolution of family. No matter what you do, you're like stuck in that realm of family and that value. And your assets are built through family, especially mother. Okay. However, depending upon what planet controls your second house, you'll have quite a different result. Although the foundation, what I told you will be the same, there'll be some different results. Let's say if sun rules your second house and it moves into the fourth house, that means what? It is now debilitated, especially at 10 degrees. Otherwise, it's in the sign of Libra. Okay. And then what you have to realize is that second Lord has moved to the third from itself, meaning that whatever the second house represents, there's going to be effort that's going to require like the third house. So third house energy is still there because it's moved third place from itself. So third place from itself has that magnetic ability of the third house being involved, meaning self effort. So whether you building a real estate wealth or whether you building a, a political wealth through politics, you know, requires a lot of effort. So if sun moves there, sun might be debilitated. So if your sun is between seven degrees and 11 degrees, there's gonna be a lot of battles for your assets. You may not get your family assets or your mother assets. Your mother takes on the role of the father to provide you security. And even then you may not appreciate that as a person because your son is very badly damaged. It's like sword fights between you and your mother. Even your father then gets a relationship with the father is damaged due to concerns of the family or uh, of the, you know, family lineage and how the money is coming in, there may not be money and due to lack of money, you get into constant battles with your mother and father, yet still, mother tries to provide you with security and wealth. 
you know so there's a lot of turmoil that goes on but if sun has moved away from like 12 degrees onwards to all the way to 30 degrees then it's isn't just a sign of libra sign of libra represents beauty sign of libra represents like you know any kind of design any kind of relationship forming so sun here although it was debilitated now it's just that you become a very private person who wants to who values the beauty of home you need to have security you need to have a house you need to have something that you can value on okay and your father too may actually help you give a lot of artistic stuff what you value is what your father has given you as an asset which is creativity okay so that's something you want to look for let's say moon rules the uh, uh, for, uh, second house moon moves into the fourth house it's in the sign of Virgo ruled by Mercury it shows that your mind, your peace of mind, all and the things that you value comes through being very calculative about your assets. You're very analytical about what you spend, how much you spend. Your mother teaches you a lot about hard work and she teaches you how to be calculative, how to be logical, how to be analytical. And in your home environment is all about that. You may have grown up with a mother who was a healer, might have been a doctor or you might have grown up in a family of mathematician, mathematician and accountants. Okay, so your peace of mind comes in when you're in home and you're, everything is organized, everything is neat and clean, and at the same time you are budgeting yourself. See that? And let's say Mars comes into the second house. If Mars rules the first house, okay, I mean, sorry, the second house, as an Aries or something or Scorpio, but let's say if Aries and moves into the fourth house in the sign of Gemini. So there's a lot of energy in the home and a lot of communicative energy happening. It may not necessarily be bad. You know, a lot of people have Mars in their fourth house, but, but Mars is a natural malefic planet. It tends to give power struggles wherever it sits. So yeah, there might be these arguments between you and your mother. A lot of communication, a lot of like just biting of the tongue, you know, in home. However, there could be a lot of energy too at the same time. Your mother may have taught you how to be a gr good communicator, how to be aggressive communicator. You know, this also shows that because Mars has a lot of willpower and a lot of, you know, strength, aggressiveness, your mother also was behind giving you aggression. Now, that could be good or bad. If Mercury is damaged, it can show that because mom was, your mother was so ba badly behaving with you, you became very aggressive and very much of like a fighter with other people you may fight in home. But Mars is mainly, it's about strength. You know, there's a lot of strength in home. You know, with having Sun and Mars can actually show that you have a lot of po political instincts in you. You know, because fourth house represents the people of the homeland, people of childhood, where you grew up. And Sun is the government, Sun is politics. So it shows you want to take care of people uh, of your homeland. Mars is a soldier and fighter. You want to fight for the people of your homeland. You know, it all depends on where Mars is sitting. So when you, what you value is you value fighting for, the, for people and for yourself. You know, your ego as son becomes somebody who wants to take care of the people. And that's what you value. And let's say if uh, Mercury comes into play. If Mercury, let's say, controls the um, third house. I mean, the second house with the third sign, Gemini. That means he's in the sign of uh, Leo in the fourth house. That can actually also represent a great communicator towards the people of the homeland, a great communicator of inside the home, a very dynamic person because of the fact Mercury, any planet in the fourth house aspects the 10th house of career. So here your business and analytical skills and the logical skills comes through the home and it ventures out into the uh, public life, ventures out into the, uh, the world of, you know, professional um, uh, your professional work or whatever you do. Uh, you know, with the sign of Leo, it can show that there's a lot of, you know, self-expression that is being expressed within the home and which can show that you can be an art teacher. You can be a drama teacher because fourth house also represents schooling as well, like the fifth house. So, and Mercury is education. So it can show you can be a teacher of these things. You can also be a great communicator of like po political events. At political events, you know how to communicate because Leo sign represents politics as well, along with self-expression, okay? Venus comes in. Let's say Venus controls uh, the sign of Taurus, 
okay and venus comes into the fourth as a sign of cancer sign of mother what it shows this person is absolutely attached to the mother and mother is not only a best friend but mothers taught you how to treat women you value the education of your mother and you were like wow my mother taught me how value uh, edu uh, educated me and showed me the value of how to treat women she gave me the artistic skills which i value you know she showed me how to accumulate wealth she showed me how to make my home beautiful whether i'm a male or female and venus in the fourth house gets gains directional strength like with moon so here, these, the, these people get all the conveniency of life. They value conveniency. Venus in the fourth house, a woman with that, will definitely look for a guy who can provide her with home, who can provide her with stability. Even though she may not say it, and most likely she will kind of point out that, look, I want stability in my life. I want conveniency, and most likely she'll get it. These can make very good um, uh, interior decorators. Because Venus is beauty, fourth house is home. Cancer is emotion. You put your emotion into your creativity in the home. So you're deeply attached to making not only your home beautiful, but somebody else's home beautiful. Okay, it can also represent an architect of home. Okay, and so let's say Jupiter comes into play. Jupiter rules the Pisces sign in your second house. And it's sitting in the fourth house in the sign of Taurus. It can show that your value comes through accumulating wealth in being in the financial world of banking. It can show somebody who's actually a psychologist who may be into showing a financial analyst, financial analyst or a family financial guide. He, the, the, you can be, be with somebody who shows not only their family how to accumulate and expand wealth, but you can do this from home and you can teach people how to increase their wealth. You can be a great public speaker because of the fact that it also looks at the 10th house of career. And second house of speech. Jupiter is in the fourth house of home looking at the professional house. So you can be a psychologist. You can be a psychiatrist in home working. You can be an astrologer. Okay. But mainly with the sign of Taurus, it shows that Jupiter really is good about finances. You know, so you can show somebody who's very good with their savings and finance and who can also be in a career of financing and banking. Saturn. Saturn comes into the uh, uh, third house. OK, if Saturn comes into the third house, let's say Aquarius uh, rules your second house. Saturn is the fourth house. Saturn is debilitated. And especially if he's at the right degree where he's debilitated, it can show a lot of responsibility and burden upon you regarding your family. From childhood, you felt the burden of taking the family and pulling the family you your mother could have been put she could have been a d dictator in your life she could have been like this disciplinarian who when you messed up she just completely went berserk on you she showed you hard work and but she showed you hard work in a very uh, bad manner where either she might have abandoned you so you were detached from the mother or she must have made you work your ass off when you didn't really have to but there was this, uh, this really just like animosity against the mother. You must have uh, savings. It becomes really hard till mid-30s. So if se second house is uh, Saturn ruling your assets and family and is debilitated, especially at the right degrees, it can show somebody who just couldn't save money, tried hard saving money, you know, and, and also with the sun debilitated, it can also do that. So by the mid thirties, you start to gain wealth. You start to, you know, accumulate wealth because debilitated planets actually tend to give more wealth than exalted planets because you know, you've become clever because you didn't have money because you had hunger to collect valuables. You can become a thief in a negative sense, or you can become a real estate developer or an engineer with Saturn and being in Aries debilitated and you can accumulate your wealth through that process. Okay, and also this can represent a government worker, like a soldier, policeman, because the fact fourth house represents homeland, people of home. Tenth house represents government. Opposite to government are the people who are serving the government. So you are serving the government like the spouse. So you can be a soldier. You can be even with Mars in the fourth house. You can be a soldier and policeman. So Saturn and Saturn represents the law and order in your home. You, you you had to just like be that soldier. Otherwise, if you messed up, boom, you know, things go haywire like that. So this is why 
house to house things, like I mentioned, is never the same. The foundation is the same, but either it's good, bad, communicative, not communicative, aggressive, power struggle, ego, all that comes into play, okay? So guys, this was my analysis of second lord in the third house. I mean, second lord in the fourth house. Uh, so if you're new to my channel, subscribe below. And if you want to know where your second lord is placed, and if it's in the fourth house, for that, check out the links below. Check out my books, there, Astrology at the Speed of Light and Conjunctions at the Speed of Light. And when you get these books, I will send you the link to look at your own chart. Just make sure you follow the directions below. Well, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>